Well, we put out a video earlier today, and I figure it definitely needs an update since some of the elements in today's forecast have changed. As you can see, we've got a high risk there with SPC doing the pink color. High risk there in central Mississippi out to central Alabama. The current radar as of 6.30 p.m. shows an extensive MCS stretched north through south through central Mississippi. That other patch of convection that was in southern Mississippi has moved into Alabama and prompted a number of tornado warnings. And we can see there's three of them in effect at this hour out in that region. Now one of the big changes we had this afternoon is this particular cluster of thunderstorms has solidified into an MCS. And that definitely has a bearing on the forecast this afternoon because that's going to exhaust a lot of the moisture on the back side. In other words, the air mass back there is going to be overturned. Cold pools at the surface and reduced instability. Now we still can get storms back there. However, the LCLs and the bases likely to be a little bit higher. Now, to show you the changes in the models, this is the high-resolution rapid refresh from about noon, and I'm going to bring this up to the current time. So as you can see, it was showing very little in Mississippi, only in the extreme western part of the state, and the primary line is pretty much right along the cold front, and that's about where it is right now. Is that what we have right now? No. These little cells here became dominant, and as a result, a lot of the convection shifted over to this location here. Now, this kind of evolution is not that much of a surprise. The models do have a lot of trouble handling the organization of convection, and that's difficult even for us forecasters. And for the most part, we're pretty much just going along for the ride, trying to respond to the situation from hour to hour. So this is the hand we're dealt with for this evening, and that means a lot of the severe weather is going to focus along that MCS as it moves eastward, and any cells out ahead of the line will certainly have potential to become severe. Now, had this line not formed up, I think there would have been a lot more potential for severe weather in Mississippi. To a certain extent, these storms are outrunning the better weather setup down to the south. So the current model indications are looking like this. This is what we have with high resolution rapid refresh, and obviously we're ahead of this. So still the models are lagging a little bit, but we can look at the overall trend, and that's to shift things into Alabama. So certainly we're going to be looking at stuff out here this evening around 8 to 9 p.m., so all of these cells, including up here in Birmingham and Huntsville, those are going to have to be monitored very carefully. On the back side, I think the air mass is going to be kind of overturned there. But there still may be enough shear for something to come together back there. And the evolution through the rest of the evening. Yep, see that right there? Yep, that looks like discrete cells. And those look like they could be supercellular. That's around 11 to 12 this evening. And given the lag in the model data, I think this could be very well in eastern Alabama around this particular time. The visible satellite loop this afternoon looks like this. There was some clearing earlier, but now we're overcast with anvils all over the place. Poking out from the overcast, some overshooting tops, up to about 40 to 45,000 feet there. That signifies some of the heavier elements, and that's a pretty good overshoot right there in Alabama. Those storms have the tornado warnings. 
And then further out to the east, the front located roughly here, we're not going to see that on the visible loop, but further west, dust from West Texas. Yep, very windy in that area, bringing down dust from the Lubbock Midland area all the way into San Antonio, and high winds throughout much of North Texas. And there's those high winds in Texas gusting up to 40 knots at DFW Airport. And a very unusual air traffic pattern in DFW, they're operating entirely off the diagonal runways. Normally the flow is north to south or south to north, but not today. Too high of a crosswind at that airport. And back to the SPC products, there's the Tornado Watches covering almost all of Mississippi and much of Alabama, some of it down to Louisiana and Tennessee. And a new mesoscale discussion there issued late this afternoon shows that they're thinking about that area in central Alabama down to southeastern Mississippi. They're looking for discrete storm development likely continuing, and we certainly saw that with a high-resolution rapid refresh model. And that will maintain the risk for tornadoes, both in the discrete supercells and within the squall line itself. There's one last look at the radar. So this is what you need to be using if you're going to be following this situation. The time for using model data is just about gone. It does point to a heightened environment for rotating storms throughout this entire area here. And as we mentioned, we're going to focus on cells out ahead of the line as well as the line itself. And that southern part of the line down there north of Gulfport looks uh, pretty solid. And we could see bow structures developing anywhere along that line. So I think that's probably about all that needs to be said. I'm going to leave you the surface analysis from the earlier program. We're doing this whole thing kind of experimentally. I want to just kind of see how it works out. And I'm going to cut out the older forecast stuff and insert this and get that uploaded as quickly as possible. So now I turn you back over to that earlier surface analysis. And, of course, the obligatory surface analysis. There's our weather system there in the southeastern U.S., Bear Clinic Low in far northeastern Oklahoma. And you can see the approach of that Canadian air from about Chicago all the way down to Wichita and Abilene. Pretty good temperature difference between Indianapolis, where it's almost 60, and Chicago, where it's down in the 30s. So a few different air masses interacting with this southern U.S. system. But down there, along the Gulf Coast, some rich moisture, 80 over 70 temperature and dew point flowing north into that system and helping to prime the severe weather prospects in that region. Pretty quiet out in the western U.S., not much to say about that. And up in Canada, we'll take a quick look up in that region, 1025 millibar high coming out of the Canadian prairies and a new front moving through the Hudson Bay region. Temperatures have warmed a little bit, but we're still seeing minus 27 up in the Canadian high Arctic. And over the next couple of days, we're going to see that weather system moving eastward into the Atlantic seaboard region. A couple of occlusions back there over the Ohio River Valley, and you can see that there's a lot of cold air on tap in Quebec and Ontario, which will be flowing down the backside of those systems as we get into the Friday and Saturday time period. And that'll help produce some of these snow showers that you see there in Pennsylvania, New York City, and West Virginia. That'll also provide a bit of a backdoor high, backdoor cold air mass into Texas and Arkansas and keep things kind of mild going into the weekend. You can see that the return flow is not yet set up, except out there in the northeastern Mexican region. Only by Saturday and Sunday, especially Sunday, do we start seeing the return flow setting up once again. And out to the west, yep, another Pacific system moving in. So we're going to be contending with that as we get into Monday and Tuesday. So possibly some more thunderstorms on the Great Plains as we start out the new week. 
Okay, so I need to go ahead and package this production and get it uploaded. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Have a good one, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.